this. How can you fix your marriage? You embarrassed, they be laughing at all them broken promises and flowers. Don't be passing back. You can get this close for no divorce, so just imagine that. Twelve weeks of my life will save you from the avalanche. How can you fix your marriage? You can fix your marriage. How can you fix your marriage? How can you fix your marriage? Twelve weeks of my life, we can fix your marriage. Twelve weeks of my life, how can you fix your marriage? Twelve weeks of my life, help you fix your marriage. Twelve weeks of my life. Twelve weeks of my life, you can fix your marriage. Hello, Mars Life. Hey, hey. So to all our courageous, fearless lovers, yes, we are here today with a message for you all. Right. Yes, yes. So you know, healing. You know, talk a bit about that, Deron. What we've been doing for the last, like I said, three months, we've been energy healing, and what that does is. Our energy, our energy field can be clogged up, and, and if it's clogged up, then that can cause all kind of stress and anger and negative emotion and disease and dis-ease in our body. So basically what I've been doing is I've been able to build the energy field in my body to connect with your energy field to create a good flow of energy, which basically alleviates stress and pains as well and diseases in the body. So I'm, I'm not sure if you saw the, the show that his name was, uh, they call him The Healer. And he had a show that was in California. Mm -hmm. And basically we've been, we've been doing that as well. I've been doing that here in, in Arizona. And I want to say thank you for all the people that's been calling and requesting me. And, and I've been building quite a following with it. So we wanted to say thank you mm -hmm. for all your participation. But we want to jump into this video and say, yes. this is what we're trying to do is heal your energy through this video, through releasing people from holding grudges and holding on to negativity. Yes. That's what we want to talk about. So I came across an article about Angelica Houston and Oprah Winfrey. What? Yes. <laughs> and essentially, Angelica Houston believes that Oprah Winfrey has held a grudge with her since 1985 when she won the Oscar over her with the color purple situation. Oh, so this goes way back. So she says, you know, when they're at events, she doesn't acknowledge her. She never invited her to be on the show. So you can see she's kind of like, she feels she's harboring resentments towards her. Angelica Houston feels these things. Now, we don't know if this is true on Oprah's end. We don't know how true it is even on Angelica Houston's end. Right. But it brings up a very valid point that grudges are real. They are. And then I want to say Oprah Pro, she played that role. You told Harpo to beat me. Well, I knew it was something that something was going to happen after that, after that line. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so that was definitely a, a good move. I feel like she should have got an award. She did get an honorary award in 2011. She did get, you know, eventually. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's real, you know? People hold grudges. We hear it all the time with our clients. Like, all the time. especially if there's been an infidelity type situation, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, you know, two, three years later, it's still the same argument. It's still the same discussion because those hurts have never been resolved. Right, right. They still feel the pain from that. Uh-huh. You know? And there's suspicions, and they're still checking the phone. The other person feels like they're in a box, and that they can't be themselves and spread their wings. And it really breaks down relationships. Yeah, yeah, feeds insecurities. Well. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm so grudges, you know, the first step with grudges is to take control. You have to make that conscious decision to say, you know what? I'm not going to hold on to this anymore. I'm choosing to think differently about this situation. The more you hold on the grudges, the more you keep yourself on the hook for pain and hurt and anguish. Things that you can let go and move on and start growing. Uh -huh. from. So, here, here's a, just a quote. It says that researchers at Emory University have shown that holding on to stress contributes to high blood pressure and heart disease. Yeah. So you got to learn how to let go of grudges. You really do. It, it's The research is all there that holding on to negative emotions causes all types of chronic health issues. You know, essentially, you know, you got cortisol st stored up in your body, and that's, you know, your fight response. So you're always in that space where you're on edge and you're alert, and it's a problem for you. So it's very important to, you know, let go. 
and make that first choice. Mm -hmm. So the second thing is to make it for you. You know, forgiving and moving on and let going of grudges is not for the other person. It doesn't mean that you condone their behavior or that you, you're you okay with that behavior. What it means is that you're letting go of that emotional chain that's keeping you bonded to that person. Correct. Correct. Because the more you keep yourself attached to that person, the more you relive that offense. The more over and over and over you feel that same negative emotion. And it's time to break that cycle. You know, it's time to grow from that. It's time to live a happy and prosperous life. Less stress, you know? Yeah. You don't want to stroke out or have a heart attack. Healing. Of that negative. Healing. And it takes courage to let go nah. and step be outside of yourself to go against your normal way of doing things. It takes a strong person. It, it does. a strong person. So the second thing you need to think about is stepping into that person's shoes. You know, a lot of times we don't even think about what's going on in the other person's head. All we could see is the offense that was caused against us. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. And a lot of times when we think about that offense, it just gets us madder and madder. And the, the more angry we get, the less we're thinking clearly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So let's take it back to the cheating situation. Mm -hmm. So when you think about stepping into that person's shoes... You know, a lot of times we see it with the person that's been cheated on. They're trying to rationalize. Why did this person cheat on me? Why did they do this to me? What did I do? What did this? What did that? Is it me? You know, is it me? You know, but you really got to step into that other person's shoes. There's a lot of things that can be going on there. It could be, you know, past hurts and fears about getting intimate and close with people. It could be anger. It could be um, that they're just wired to seek that type of tendency and that newness. Mm -hmm. So you really got to step into that person's shoes and try to understand the situation and know that you're letting go for you and you're not condoning that behavior because mm -hmm. it's not okay. It could be their ego. It could be your ego. It could mm -hmm. be your insecurities making you feel like you're not the, the woman or the man that, that you used to be or you should be, and yet you're taking it out on the other person because of your insecurities. A lot of times that happens, and it damages the relationship. Yes, and that's how the real healing begins, because if you both can understand each other, then you can move forward. If you're always spouting, spouting, spouting it, this person saying, hey, you hurt me, you hurt me, you hurt me, and you feel like they never understand that you were hurt, you'll carry it for three years. You will. You will. So the biggest thing is, for that person that has cheated, say, you know what, I understand this, it, this is going to take some time because a lot of times we want you to just get over it right fast. Just get over it. Let's move forward. Since you don't want to break up or leave me, let's move forward and heal from it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But that person has to have their own time to heal. Same way with people just holding grudges. They have to have their time to heal. But you do have to heal. You, it's a, some point that you get and say, you know what, I'm going to let all the people that I'm holding grudges, mm -hmm. I'm going to let go. And then when you let go of all those people on that list, your life tends to open up. Things that you've been wanting open up for you because you're not holding on to negativity. You have room for positive things to happen in your life. Exactly. So you have to make room. you got to make room. So how do you make room is you acknowledge your feelings. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we suppress things, but be one with them. Acknowledge them. They're real. They're there. You're, they're your experience. The one important thing, though, is their feelings change. They, do. they don't have to stay that way. Right. You know, they're fluid. They move. They're like our GPS system. They tell them which directions to behave and which ways to go. So if you can acknowledge your feelings of hurt and frustration and pain and redirect that thinking, then you can steer that to a more survivor mentality where you're able to really move forward and feel the learning and the understanding from the situation. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, you know, don't do it alone. Get some support. Get some help. Get yes. Some help. We'll be happy to work with you. We work with a lot of couples all over the country, really, now, since we've been growing from our little office in Mississippi. Remember the little office in Mississippi? Yeah. <laughs> so we've been, we've been growing from that, and we want to say thank you. You know, we want to say thank you. But also, we want to say, you know, it's hard to open up and let people in your relationship. Mm -hmm. you know? So when you do, then understand that we're coming in and we want to help you work on these things. Mm -hmm. So if you're ready to work, let's work. If you think that this is just some something that we can kind of come in and, and tell your partner, 
basically what you what you want to do with them and all this stuff. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about working on things that you want to improve in your life. Mm -hmm. But it takes you to do it. It starts with changing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Angelica is holding on to some resentments for even saying this in this interview. Right. Because that means that she's feeling like so that Oprah's been, yeah. been angry with her all these years. Yeah. You know, Oprah's a billionaire now. I mean, she's got commas on top of commas. On uh -huh. top of commas. Uh -huh. Zeros. You see what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. so and then, this, I mean, it didn't hold her back. You know, it didn't stop her for, from progressing. But, you know what, though, if she does see Angelica Houston and if she is holding a grudge, then no matter how many billions of dollars that she has uh -huh. and money and uh -huh. prosperity and all these things, she still has that emotion over it. You know, so she still has an effect over her emotions. So she can instantly put her in a bad mood just by seeing her. And that's too much power for somebody to have over your life. It is. You know? That's too much. So verbalize, you know. Verbalize that, okay, I, I forgive. I'm letting go of this grudge. Now, if Angelica Houston would have came in the article and said, you know, I love you, Oprah. I know we haven't spoke since, you know, that Oscar ceremony in 1985. But I'm here. You know, I, I appreciate your work. You know, I appreciate my work and how we've shared in these types of things over the years, although we haven't communicated. She's verbalizing that she's forgiven and that she's letting go of any grudges and acknowledging that there may be grudges and trying to seek that understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because it, when you start really seeking that understanding, then you automatically say, you know what, I'm sorry, I love you, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. You don't really worry about the other side of it because that's really not important. You, you're putting your love out there and saying, you know what, I'm just going to put it out there. If I get it back, great. If I don't, that's still great. Mm -hmm. You know, because you just give that unconditional love. You put it out there, you know. And we don't know that. If there's still beefing, or if this beef was ever real, really, yeah. you know, this is this is something that this is hearsay, you know, and we know that Oprah Winfrey is a very smart, intelligent woman, and we respect everything that she's done. We respect Angelica's work. Yes, we expect mm -hmm. we we respect Angelica's work as well, and both people involved, you know. Uh -huh. So and we just use this as an example to say, you know, if you are holding any grudges, let them things go, let so that go. way you can be free of that person. You know, That's and right. free of that negative emotion and then add more positive in. Mm -hmm. So it's important to let go so that your energy can be open to more positive experiences. And we want to say we love Oprah and we love Angelica Houston as well. We love everybody that's watching this video and all our family and friends and relatives. Really, everybody that's walking this earth, we pray that we increase your light and understanding with this video. Mm -hmm. So, you know, comment, message us, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you need help with forgiveness, we do have some self-coaching tools. If you're not ready to kind of do the one-on-one -on -one thing, we have some tools that you can use to work within your own time to help yourself move forward. So if you want these resources, reach out. We'll send them to you. Yes. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Mine's life, yes. mine's love, mine's healing. Yes. God bless. God bless.